Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional. Checking with team number 6574, Faradermis. Uh, Faradermis team we've had our eyes on for many years now, uh, building fantastic machines. We're going to be covering all about their robot here. Uh, take a look at Faradermis. This here, a great compact machine. A uh, couple things we're going to be really highlighting is what some changes they made to their belly pan. Love the cable carrier that they're doing as well, too. We'll be showing off their elevator and intake and some cool positional controls coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Uh, Arison and Laura, tell me more about uh, on your robot here. We're going to be covering uh, changes to your belly pan and what you've done for that. But first, talk about this uh, cable carrier uh, that you have here and why it's uh, been working well for your team. And something I'd love to hear as well, too, is like this is something kind of more unique we've seen. What advice do you maybe have for other teams who want to do something like this, too? All right. So our cable carrier here, um, basically what it does is it keeps the wires from getting caught or getting torn out when our elevator is moving up and down. We have a lot of wiring down here, as you can see, and a lot up here too. And this is just, it's a really nice way for us to keep the wires out of the way and make sure nothing gets caught, nothing gets ripped out or anything like that. Ace, do you wanna show them how it works? So when I press this button, it's going to um, put the elevator up and you can see how the cable carrier goes up with it and keeps all of those wires protected so that way they don't get in the way. Yeah, as Ace was saying, it keeps the wires out of the way really nicely. We've had to replace it a couple times because it's cracked quite a few times up here and we've had some issues with length. But other than that, it's worked really well overall protecting our wires. Um, the main trouble we had with it was length and basically we made it too long and it would get crushed when the elevator went down and so we had to figure out a couple of fixes for that and one thing that worked really well was zip tying it up just so that it was um, it didn't get crushed. Sure. Uh, I'd love to hear more about your belly pan as well too. Uh, when we were talking earlier you had aluminum and you switched over to steel for that. Lots of weight added for that. Talk to me about why you went that route and how that ballast is working out for you too. We previously competed at the Northern Lights Regional in Duluth, and that's when we had the aluminum belly pan. And our robot was really light, and there were a couple matches where we almost tipped a sure. few times. So we decided that we were going to change the belly pan to steel, and that has helped a lot with our balance, and it's added some weight onto our bot. It also allows us, um, one of the things that we were having is we couldn't, we had to slow down when our elevator went up because otherwise we would fall forward so that now we can move faster and get more pieces onto the grid with the heavier belly pan. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Andrew, talk to me about on your uh, elevator area, what's gone into that uh, and how it's working out. Uh, you know, watching in the field, it seems like you're able to go pretty quick to your positions, that sort of thing. So talk to me about the composition that's gone into this. Yeah, so this is the thrifty pot elevator, but we've modified it a little bit to fit our needs better. So these tubes right here, we made them pretty thin. They were 0.04 inches, I believe. So we sure. added some aluminum supports with 3D prints inside earlier on Thursday so that they wouldn't crack. And you can, as it comes up, like they were talking about before, the cable carrier comes with it. Yeah, and then also, we have an arm and a wrist. This mechanism is the arm which controls this bar to move up and down. We can't really adjust it because it has presets, but then also this moves, so we can get pretty much any scoring position or pickup position that we could want. 
On your intake itself, talk to me about uh, this in here because it looks like are you, are you grabbing cones from one spot and cues from the other sort of thing? Yep. How'd you end up coming up with this? So this is the EveryBot intake. We've just adapted it so that we could have it on the end of an elevator. Sure. So when it's rotating, the wheels can suck in for a cube and get caught right here. And then it's spinning this the opposite direction for cones. Yeah. Uh, anything else uh, from like a, a collection area that you wanted to talk about or overview? Um, Over here, we originally had a Neo, but now it's a Neo 550 because there wasn't enough clearance on this tube right here. So we act, while we were assembling it, we realized what happened. Like in CAD, we didn't notice that. Sure. So then we had to replace this for a Neo 550 and it's been working pretty well for us. Let's try to wrap up on your robot Ace. I'd love to hear more about uh, some of your button presets and controls or anything else from programming that you'd like to overview on this cool machine. So um, when I, I'm the operator, so when I have to score a piece or grab a piece, I can easily do that by pressing preset buttons. That way, instead of um, having to manually move the arm, I can just press a button and it goes anywhere I want to. So I don't have to move this. And it's really easy for different scoring positions like the single substation or the or the double substation. So for the double substation, I can press this button here and it'll grab a cone. So that'll grab a cone for me. Um, but if I need to grab a cube from the single substation, I can press this button. And that'll do the same thing. So it's really nice for me to have so I don't have to worry about getting a specific position and we can test it easily and fit it to our needs instead of just having to do it manually which makes it a lot more stressful. And another thing is that we have Path Planner which does the same thing. So um, that's how we do our auto programming wise. Hey Celeste, so I'd love to hear more about uh, Path Planner, what you're doing for some of your auto modes and what's gone into that. So. We, as you said, we use Path Planner to do our autos. So we can, this is the single piece level middle. So what we do is we can set a path to go wherever we want on the field. It's really nice because we have a drawing on the field and we can just click where we want to go and it will go right into the code. So with our single piece level middle is right here. It, so on here, it will drop a, it will drop our cone and then it will go to this position so we can move out of the community and get us points for that. And then it will go onto the charge station and it will auto level for us. So Path Planner is really nice to use so we can just put a path there and not have to worry about where we are on the field. Well, Farrah Domus, thank you so much for uh, taking time to tell us about your uh, robot here. you got a great machine. I uh, can't wait to see you compete more here at the Wisconsin Regional. So wish you best of luck here uh, and hopefully in the future as well too. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.